So bridge pickup is on, neck pickup is also on, so that's in out of phase mode. See when it's in, it's supposed to be both pickups, like in parallel or whatever it is, that's not working. And that, when it's in this position, it's not the bridge pickup's not working. So I'm guessing it's the switch. So I'm going to take all the strings off and take the pick guard off. Possibly the control plate, but they're not too scratchy. And I'm going to try out this WD-40 electrical contact cleaner spray. Capo. Well, I don't even need the capo actually because I need to take all the strings off. I'm trying to save this set of strings since I just put them on uh, after I did the neck work just to make sure everything was alright. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing, but I'm using my string winder to take the strings off. God damn it. <laughs> I hate untangling strings. So I'm just going to shoot some electronic cleaner just a little bit into the switches to see if that fixes anything. But I'm also going to relook at all the uh, all the wires. I already I previously had this open. Just as like a precautionary look. I haven't had coffee today, so if I'm like my hands are shaky, I apologize. look to be intact this was definitely refinished at some point there's like a greenish blue hue on the inside oh yeah that foam I put in there yesterday just in case there is a shielding plate on the bottom all right so I'm taking the electronic cleaner but I'm also taking a bunch of precautions to make sure that I don't get the stuff anywhere where I don't want it to go.
and just work the switches back and forth. Remember they're fragile. So just be gentle. Just wanna work it back and forth. Don't force anything that doesn't need to be forced. You guys love that sound, don't you? Alright, so in the middle they're both off. So these switches are just weird. So we got that somewhat <clears throat> figured out. I'm just gonna give it a few more spritzes. Or yeah, just one more spritz on each switch. Just to be sure. I'm gonna turn off that amp. Shake this up because I don't think I did. So yeah. Shake it up. But first, make sure you know what you're doing. Take all necessary precautions, especially on a vintage guitar. Shake the can. So I did two spritzes of the special juice. See if I can just give it a spritz down the center. I figured I'd do it through the top too because it seems like there's resistance. Alright, I think that solved the issue. Yeah, the pots aren't scratchy. So, I'm trying to see if these are just stiff to begin with, or 
they're just they're, they're stiff from after whatever from this contact cleaner. All right, I guess we're gonna bolt this thing back together. Alright, so I'm scrapping these set of strings because I'm not untangling this bullshit. It's just way too annoying, especially with these types of bridges. I personally, I can't stand Mustang bridges. I personally can't stand Mustangs to begin with. My buddy Pete has one. That's his main guitar, and I have to set it up a lot because that thing does not like to listen to anybody. And it's super annoying. I keep telling him he should just smash it on stage because there's going to be nothing good that comes out of owning a Mustang. Where are my strings? Just getting the Dario 10s. It's my last repack. Before I do that, I'm gonna wipe down the frets one more time because I wanna make sure they stay mirror shine. Alrighty. strings. I know it's eco-friendly and all that shit, but come on. Alright, so back to this. With Mustangs, the real pain in the ass with them is the way you have to string them. So you gotta get an still on. So you gotta go through this way. And then you got to go under the bridge. It's just super dumb. Because then you have, you have a fighting battle. I'm trying to keep that to where you want it to go. So I know you can't see, but high E string wants to live there. So you gotta go, you gotta pretend there's two extra tuners. So you gotta go one tuner, two tuners, and then like a third. And then you put it down into its home. Wrap the first few winds around. You grab string winder sorry if you can't see my god you really can't see i'm an idiot oh, come on oh no now i'm free-handed hold on oh good all right so you want to go one tuner two tuners then cut the string stick it in the hole and bada bing bada boom Technical difficulties at Tom's Project Guitars. Please remain seated. Alright, so what I like to do is. I mean, it's super annoying. God damn it. And, ooh, watch your eyes, children. So I like to put both E strings on. Just because I feel like it gives the bridge a balance. So yeah, you put it through this way. And then you put it through here. 
if it'll fit. I usually like to jam something underneath. But I don't have something that'll fit this right now. And I don't feel like messing it up. It's always good to keep a magnet at your bench. Put all the pieces of guitar strings into it, or onto it. Usually with Mustangs, I like to put a higher gauge or a, a thicker gauge set of strings on it. But since this is a vintage one, I'm just throwing tens on it. Some basic tens. All right, you don't need to see me restring this whole thing. So it's all strung up. It's not at pitch yet. I'm just tuning this to E standard, 440 hertz. All right, so it's tuned to pitch. First thing you want to do is neck relief. Neck relief! So, you get a 12 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge, you capo the first fret. Come on camera. All right, so then you fret the 17th with your finger and you measure at the seventh. And you want it to just glide in there and feel no resistance. You want it to feel like it's gliding against it. Like it's slight resistance, but it's nothing stopping you from doing what you're doing. And as of right now, I got the truss rod perfect where it needs to be. Before it was too tight, so there's too, there's no relief in the neck. But now there's perfect amount of relief. String action, I like to do 5 64ths rather than some people like 4 64ths, but I always feel like that's a little bit too low. Right, so this one's sitting at perfect 5, and so is the treble side. Oh, yeah, I forgot last night. I what's it called? I already gave this a setup technically. So First, you tune it. Second, check the neck relief. Third, do the action. Um, fourth, uh, I guess intonation. So tune the pitch. Hit the harmonic at the twelfth. Oh, Alright, cool. The E is in. The B is close enough. A little sharp, so just gotta pull it back a little bit. As much as I was gonna get. Alright, that's 
pretty much spot on, almost. And the E is in. <clears throat> Next is pickup height. I like to do it in some of getaway because I'm not spending a bunch of money on specialty luthier tools that I can just do with drill bits. So the biggest one I have for this pickup height is eighth of an inch. Smallest is 332s. So what I like to do is just ma uh, have it be on the magnet. And then you want it to have just enough space between the bottom of the string and the top of the pickup. Wow, okay. Oh, that one's fine. Huh. Bridge. Bridge base side. That's perfect. This one can probably come down a touch. There we go. So yeah, let's pick a height. Base side, eighth of an inch, treble side, 332. That should be it for this thing. Hopefully. Sorry, I'm in my pajamas right now. Gotta have a lazy day. So let's see if this thing wants to cooperate. That's a good sign. I'm just gonna retune. This thing has the Mustang twang already, I can tell. So neck pickup. Tone at halfway. Tone all the way down. Now I'm gonna roll off the volume a little bit. This is probably like seven. So both sides of the neck switch are working again. Oh wait. There we go. Somehow you just gotta find it. into the out of phase. This switch is... So it's bridge and neck pickup out of phase. You can tell it's a quacky sound. And now they're in phase. See like a fuller sound. Once again out of phase.
rip roaring bridge pickup. I dig it. Not really the greatest guitar player, but I think you get the point. <coughs> So yeah, this is the Fender Mustang, 1965, November 8th, 1965, and I finally got it working again. Let's go over the checklist that I did, because you know, everybody needs a checklist. All right, so I recrowned and polished the frets. That was in the part one. I oiled the fretboard with boiled linseed oil. That was also in part one. I fixed the chip in the fretboard. I don't think I filmed that. Uh, I oiled the tuner gears. I don't think I filmed that either. Uh, I gave just a general wipe down. Um, the setup that I did today, well, last night and today with newer strings. I uh, did the neck relief, which is uh, 12 thousandths of an inch at the 7th fret when you're capo the 1st, and fret the 17th, you measure it to 7th. And if you can't get your feeler gauge in there, then your truss rod's too tight, so you want to loosen it off. If you have a lot of distance between the feeler gauge and the string, you want to tighten the truss rod until it slides in just right. The string, the string height at the 17th fret, I set it to 1 64th above, I think, fender spec, or uh, something like that, but I do 5 64ths of an inch for each string, because it needs to follow the radius. Uh, did the intonation to 440 hertz. Uh, pickup height, 332s on the treble side, eighth of an inch on the bass side. I also gave a new D'Addario 10 gauge strings. I sprayed out the electronics. I still might give it another spritz just in case, but I think it'll be okay. As long as I just keep working it back and forth, but gently. Sorry for the shaky cam. <laughs> I need to get a new workbench. But um, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. That's the Fender Mustang, 1965. And hopefully, I get to work on more vintage guitars in the near future. All right. Mm -hmm.